Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of College Hockey Talk. On today's podcast, I am joined by sophomore from the Minnesota women's hockey team, Emily Zumwinkle. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Emily, and how's everything going? Yeah, everything's great. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And obviously, you're in the middle of the off season. So how has your off season been so far? And uh, uh, do you have any plans for this summer, whether it's hockey related or not? Yeah, the off season has been great so far. I mean, uh, school just finished up, so uh, it's nice getting into the summer routine. Um, and then, uh, obviously, this summer I just have a lot of training, and I know we have some fun trips planned as a family. Uh, we're going to New York City this weekend, uh, me and my two sisters and my mom for a girls' trip, and then um, hopefully over July fourth we're going to Europe uh, to visit a few of my teammates. So. Oh, nice. Have you ever been to New York before? Yeah, I went a couple of years ago, but yeah, it'll be fun. It's <laughs> exciting. That's exciting. Yeah, for sure. I've been there a few times before and I, I, it's one of my favorite cities to visit. So I really, my favorite part is the, not the Empire State Building, but it's the Rockefeller Tower. And it's like, I feel like it has a much better view and you can see like the whole skyline. That's probably like my favorite thing that I did when I was down there a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, that's so cool. Well, what do you want to work on, I guess, regarding your game uh, this off season that uh, for next season? Uh, what are some of the things that you're going to do this summer to, I guess, do that? Um, yeah, so obviously just being in the gym with Cal, our strength and conditioning coach, I think that's really crucial. And I try to go in uh, five days a week. And then um, just I have all my individual skills coaches that I work with. So I think just after the season just uh notifying like what i want to improve on and just uh talking with them about it and how i can be uh better for next year too well i want to start off this podcast talking about the beginning of your hockey career and sort of working all the way up to where you are today uh so from the research that i did it says that you're from excelsior hopefully i pronounced that town name correctly minnesota uh yeah. talk about growing up there and how did you start playing hockey yeah, it's actually really funny. My uh, Neither of my parents played hockey uh, growing up. So uh, my sister, my middle one, Grace, uh, she came home uh, one day from kindergarten with a flyer from her crush. And uh, it said to join hockey. So uh, she gave it to my dad and my dad signed her up, got her all the equipment. And uh, I remember she didn't want to go like the night before. And my dad was just like, we have all this stuff, like, just go, just try it. And she ended up loving it. So um, my older sister then started. And then I started when I was about four. Um, so yeah, I think all the probs goes to Grace for getting us in hockey. But yeah, that's pretty crazy that her kindergarten crush is the reason why you're playing hockey. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who was, who was like your favorite player growing up? I'm assuming it was probably someone on the wild if I had to take a guess. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. But I I always liked watching Zach Breezy, like you said, from the wild. Um, I think growing or now, like recently, I like watching Kale McCarr. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. I remember watching him when he was with UMass and he was so much better than everyone else. So I'm not surprised the success that he's <laughs> having um in the NHL now. Yeah, right. Now, you grew up in a hockey family. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, you got to play with your older sister, Grace, this past season. And she's obviously had a lot of success in her hockey career with Minnesota and with Team USA. Uh, what's it been like to sort of share your college experience with her? And is it nice to have like a familiar face um, on the ice uh, during your first year of college? And what has she meant to you for your hockey career? Yeah, honestly, it was just so special. I mean, when I committed here to the University of Minnesota, I we never thought we would play together because she would have already been graduated. So I kind of just wanted to like follow in her footsteps. But uh, then in my family group chat during COVID, um, her season just kept getting pushed back and pushed back. And then NCAA, NCAA came out and said that um, they would be granting everyone who played that season with the fifth year. Um, and I remember my parents sent it in the group chat and I had always dreamed of playing with Grace at the Gophers. Like that was the main goal. And so it was just so cool. Cause I was like, Oh, this could actually like happen. And then um, my freshman year coming in, um, she was centralized and chosen for the Olympic team. So it was kind of nice just like being able to create my own identity freshman year and create my own friendships and 
uh, just know what it was like without her. And then just to have her back this year was just such a bonus and it was just a dream come true. Yeah. Are you going to miss seeing her again uh, this upcoming season? Yeah. Yeah. I'll miss her a lot, but hopefully um, she'll be around more. I know she's planning to play professionally. So yeah, that'll be exciting. Awesome. And you also have another older sister named Anna, who I feel like doesn't get as much recognition as she should because she played D3 hockey for Middlebury. And I think she won a national championship with that team, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, who, who, what has she meant for your career? And uh, how has she helped you in regards to becoming a better hockey player uh, on and off the ice? Yeah, Anna's just been such a great role model mentor for both Grace and I. Um, she's so smart and like she just shows like us how to enjoy everything we do. Um, she works super hard and she always has a smile on her face and just loves what she does. And I think that's just that just attested to her great career at Middlebury. And then just moving forward, like in her job today, like she's so successful because of all the work she puts in. And I know she's coaching at BRAC where I graduated from too. And she's just such a great coach because she knows the game so well. So I think that just helps like having her around because she gives me tips and advice. So. And like you mentioned before college hockey, you played for your high school at BRAC. Uh, talk about your high school hockey experience there. What was that like? Yeah, playing for Breck was just so special. I mean, just to get the education you do um, from a school like that is just great. And then being able to play hockey, too, is a bonus. And I think that our team, like my eighth grade year, I played with Grace, my older sister. She was a senior, and it was really heartbreaking losing to Blake in the Section 5A uh, final. But uh, then the next year when they shuffled the sections around, um, we had the opportunity to make the state tournament and ultimately win it. And so – being able to win three state championships was just so special and being able to play with uh, new people each year was great. What's like the best hockey memory you have from your high school hockey days? Um, I would probably say my freshman year winning the state tournament over time. That was just so special because it was our first one that we won. And uh, yeah, it's great. Now, besides your sister, you played with a ton of great players uh, in your time with Breck. You played with Sadie Lindsay, Ava Lindsay, Carly Beanick, and Ellie Kleppinger, just to name a few. How does playing with players like that help prepare you for college hockey? Because you're going against D1 commits pretty much every day in practice. Yeah, yeah, it's great because obviously you want to be playing with the best people you want to be playing with and against. And I just had such a great honor of playing with um, – all the people that I did and I think they get all the credit for making me the player that I am today and I hope that I help them too. Now obviously you're going to be playing with some of those uh, players in uh, college hockey. Has Sadie Lindsay and Ava Lindsay have they changed at all since high school to now? Um, yeah they're two of my best friends and I just love training with them. Uh, they're so awesome and they make me better and I um, just love competing with them and practicing with them. Now talk about the Minnesota high school hockey scene and what's it like being a player in that scene? Cause I'm from the East coast. So I feel like a lot of people like myself don't really understand how big Minnesota high school hockey is. Like I saw that you guys sold out the entire XL energy center for the boys state championships, which I thought was pretty cool. And just, and it's sort of unique in the fact where you get to play for your hometown team and have the chance to move on into college hockey, where a lot of places you sort of have to move away from home in order to get that opportunity. Uh, so talk about the uniqueness of the high school hockey scene in Minnesota and what's it like being a player in that atmosphere? Yeah, obviously, Minnesota uh, being the state of hockey, like it's just. I feel like everyone wants to be playing it and everyone wants to be a part of it. So like growing up, you're always taken to the wild games and you're like, wow, well, like I want to be just like them. So I feel like that's how people get uh, honestly mainly into hockey in Minnesota is watching the professional team. Um, and I would say just playing high school, it's just such a fun atmosphere. Like your whole school's behind you, supporting you. I remember when we went to the state tournament, they like bust over our entire school. And it was so cool because it took up like a whole section of um, the XL Energy Center. So it's just so fun seeing like familiar faces in the crowd and just having your whole school behind you supporting you. Yeah, that's awesome. Do, I know you have some teammates on your team now that aren't from Minnesota. So is it cool getting the chance to talk with them just about how cool high school hockey is there? Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. I think they uh, start to understand the big hype behind <laughs> um, Minnesota high school hockey. So it's cool bringing them to games too and them just seeing the atmosphere. But 
I remember I brought um, Nellie Lightning um, to, she's from Finland. I brought her to um, the boys high school tournament. She was like amazed by how many people um, were in the stands. Who had the best student section uh, from your time uh, in high school? Um, Like girls? Are you yeah. Saying? Um, I would say the public schools get so many fans just because like their school is so big. Like, yeah, just one of their classes is probably as big as my entire high school. So I would probably say either Edina or Minnetonka just had such a big fan section. And one thing I also found cool about the whole Minnesota high school hockey thing is the all hockey hair team. I know. Uh, <laughs> why does there? Why don't they do a girls version of it? I feel like I always see a guys version of it. Honestly, I don't know. I feel like it's been going on for so long for the boys that they just haven't made a women's one yet. But my, uh, I think it was my sophomore year, uh, Carly Banick, one of my good friends, actually made the All Hockey oh, that's cool. team. And she was the number one person. So <laughs> it was so fun. Do you think any of your teammates now would make that team? Like if they did a college hockey version of it? Honestly, yeah, I think so. I think um, I got to give a shout out to Chrislyn Hangler on that one. <laughs> I think she would for sure be on it. Well, how did your high school hockey experience, I guess, help prepare you for college hockey? Like we sort of mentioned uh, about the players you play with, but just sort of just the on ice stuff. Like what were some of the things that you learned uh, from your playing experience that helps you out now? Yeah, I think just being able to play with like great players was so awesome just because it gets you ready for the competition level in college. And I have to thank all the coaches that have helped me get here uh, to the University of Minnesota. And I think I just can't do it without them. And I know for high school, like um, just being able to show up to practice every day and work hard and doing the extra things to make you better in the off season, I think is really crucial to my success um, in college. Now, what was your recruitment process like at Minnesota and what made you want to go there versus other schools you might have looked at? Yeah, so uh, back when I was getting recruited, the like um, recruiting law wasn't or rule wasn't in place yet. So um, we could essentially be recruited whenever. So I started getting recruited like end of my eighth grade year, beginning of my ninth grade year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I was talking to a few schools and then. Um, my ninth grade year, it started to become more and more because I think everyone was just catching on that recruiting was becoming so early. So uh, I think just having Grace be at the University of Minnesota, her telling me about her experience. And I think especially at eighth grade year, um, being able to play with her, I think I was like, I saw everything that she did. I saw the work ethic that she put in and I was like, I want to be just like her someday. So I think that just helped me make my decision. And I know growing up, like the University of Minnesota always felt like home and you your rays go into those games. So it's just so cool being able to play for your hometown. Yeah. And what was sort of like the biggest adjustment you had to make playing college hockey? Was it sort of the speed of the game, the physicality, or just the less time and space that you have with the puck? I think, honestly, the speed was a lot faster. Like the first game, you're like, wow, like people are on you that much quicker. Like you have less time to make a move or like whatever. Like you have to get your head up quicker and um, make a play. So. I still can't believe that like they recruited players in eighth grade. That's pretty crazy. I'm assuming they, I think they did change the rule, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They can, I think they can get recruited going into their junior year now. Yeah. That's how hard is it to sort of make a decision like that as a freshman high school? Cause like you don't really know a lot about yourself as a 14 year old, let alone a 17 year old as well, when you're actually do making your decision to go to college. So I just feel like that must be such a tough, like a challenge to sort of deal with trying to figure out, like to make a big decision, I guess, for your future. Yeah, I feel like it's very interesting because I think like at that age, like people either know what they want or like they don't, you know, because it's like you want to like, uh, like sometimes when you're that young, uh, what's important to you then might not be important to you when you're older. So I think it's just really crucial to like sit down and think about like, okay, like how will this impact me like down the line? And I think just that's really important. Now talk about your freshman season and what did you take away from that experience? I think you had a very good year overall, but unfortunately you guys didn't make it to the Frozen Four that year, which I know was sort of a disappointing uh, result to end your season that season. Yeah, that was a really cool um, season, uh, being able to uh, be a freshman on the team. It's just like you're there, like it's your dream come true. Like um, I think that 
going in, I was like, okay, like I want to be like a sponge and like just soak it all in, just learn from the older girls and uh, work on what I can and improve on how I can. And just going in, I think uh, my goal was just to play really smart and be really effective on the ice. And um, I think that that really helped my game translate to college well, because I knew that like, I won't have as much time to like skate the puck and end. So I had have to make quicker decisions. And so I think that really helped uh, me be successful these last few years. Now, this past season, like your freshman year, your team was one of the most highly ranked teams in the country throughout the entire regular season. Uh, how does your team sort of handle the pressure of being a ranked team? And what's the team's like key to success, I guess, for your consistency this past regular season, especially since your team always has a target on your back for being one of the best uh, teams in the country? Yeah, I mean, obviously this year we had so much talent and I know that every day of practice we just show up to compete and get better and it doesn't matter about the rankings for us. We never bring it up. We never talk about it. It's just working hard so at the end of the day we can be the best team that's on the ice and I think that's just like the whole NCAA like it doesn't matter who's ranked higher like you have to show up every game and compete and you have to like prove that you're that you're the team that'll win at the end of the day. Now talk about what it's like playing in the WCHA and just the competition that you face every weekend. Yeah, the WCHA is just so competitive. I mean, we have unreal teams in the conference. Like every team is unbelievable, has great talent. And I know that every night, like you're being faced with a highly competitive team and you know that every game will be a great one. Now, we talked about sort of the adjustments that you had to make to college hockey and how it was the speed of the game that really uh, caught your attention. But what do you think has been the biggest improvement you've made to your game uh, since your freshman year to now? Yeah, I think honestly, just having a year under your belt this past year was really helpful for me. I know I felt more poised with the puck and like I could almost when you feel more poised, it feels like you have more time. So I felt honestly like, I was able to slow the game down more and just um, that was really effective for me. And then I know just being more confident with the puck, like being more offensive was really crucial too. Now your team got to play in Vegas during Thanksgiving. I want to ask you about that trip. How cool was it? And uh, what did you take away from that experience? And what was it better than Nashville or was it just about as good? Like I'm curious about what your thoughts were on both those trips. Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, being able to play like other teams that are in the conference uh, is just or that are not in your conference is just really cool. I mean, um, very rarely do you get to play other teams from like the ECAC or Hockey East. So it's always cool playing new uh, competition and being able to do it in either Nashville or Vegas where you don't normally get to go is just super cool. And so I think uh, Vegas was probably my favorite just because mm -hmm. um uh, Grace, my sister, was my uh, road roommate the whole year. So it was super fun being able to be with her. And then um, having our family there was just super special. Did you get to do anything cool when you were in Vegas? Um, I'm trying to think. I know we went to the Strip uh, for one of the nights. We had team dinner. And then I know um, on Thanksgiving, we got to spend time with our family, too. That's cool. Did you get the chance to go to a Knights game? I thought I saw somewhere where, like, all the teams got to do that. Yeah, we got to go to the Knights game the first day we were there, and that was so cool. I mean, that rink is just gets everyone going. Well, I think it's what cool about that team is sort of just the production that they put on, like, before the game, like, the whole, like, intro stuff. And I just think it's pretty cool. Like, you never see that anywhere else. Oh, I know. And, like, ever since joining, like, NHL, like, they've been so successful. And obviously being in the semifinals, too, this year. Yeah. I will say, though, I thought the outfits were better in Nashville just because I like that cowboy style. Um, so that's yeah. the one thing I will say <laughs> that was better in Nashville. Yeah. Now, the biggest highlight of your season uh, last year was when you guys won the WCHA championship, uh, beating Ohio State. Uh, talk about that game and what it was like winning that trophy and championship and what it meant to your team. Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, when we play Ohio State, it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a good game. So. I think that um, just showing up that game is like everyone wanted to win that WCHA championship and just um, be able to earn that trophy because it's a testament to your hard work throughout the season. So when we won that game, it was just so special. And being able to have the trophy with my sister and my best friends is just so cool. 
You guys then advanced to the Frozen Four after beating Minnesota Duluth in the regionals. Uh, just talk about how much that win meant to you because last year you guys uh, lost to Duluth uh, had trying to head to the Frozen Four. So what was it like sort of uh, getting over that hump and finally making it to your first Frozen Four appearance as a player? Yeah, obviously last year not making the Frozen Four was such a bummer. So, I mean, just coming back and being able to make the Frozen Four was so cool. And uh, the experience was just unlike any other, uh, I want to thank the NCAA because they did so much for us and all the graphics and everything was so cool. And um, Duluth putting on the whole Frozen Four was great. And then I think my favorite thing from the Frozen Four was when we got there, um, we went out onto the ice and they were uh, there was a video on the Jumbotron and it was just all of our loved ones like wishing us good luck. And I think that was super uh, special and memorable for all of us. Yeah, I, was, I wanted to ask a little bit more about that because I thought the Frozen Four experience, both on the off the ice, looked super super cool. Uh, like the red carpet and just the whole, how they sort of uh, the whole pomp and circumstance of it. Uh, what was the red carpet like? And just sort of talk about just both the off ice stuff about the Frozen Four and what what made it special for you. Yeah, honestly, like we were treated so well, um, and like we had everything at our hands. Like we had so much accessibility and. Um, the red carpet was so cool, uh, getting off the bus and seeing all your family and friends that were there to support you was super cool. So, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm, I, my favorite part about it was all the social media presence that the NCAA did. I thought that was cool. And I remember they did a thing with all the coaches about like the sound your mascot makes. I don't know if you had the chance to see <laughs> that, but I thought Coach Frost's uh, reaction to that question was very funny to see. <laughs> I know. I remember uh, me and my sister in the hotel room. We were watching like all the coaches like go through their mascot, and we were, we just could not stop laughing for like literally an hour. <laughs> now, unfortunately, your season came to an end as you guys lost to Minnesota or, uh, to Wisconsin in the national semifinals. Uh, even though you lost, would you take away from that game and that you think is going to help your team out for next season? Because it was very close. Obviously, an OT winner is a heartbreaking way to end your season, but. I feel like there are some things to take away from that game that I feel like will be beneficial for next season. Yeah, obviously, like playing in the Frozen Four, it's everyone's, it's anyone's game. Like everyone's putting their best foot forward. And um, I know we got on the board early and then um, they got one back right away or I think in the second period maybe. But um, I think just something um, to just take away from that game is especially going into overtime, like you can't get let, get too high or too low. You just have to stay like even keel with emotion. So I think that'll be uh, important. And then I think just that will motivate our team even more for next year for bringing the trophy home. How how hard was it to like have that last moment on the ice cell with your sister? Because that could have been your last time really ever playing together in like a big setting. So I sort of want to ask about that because – I felt like that that was that's why I felt bad for you about was just sort of that whole thing. Yeah, it was such a bummer. Obviously, you want to be leaving your last game together with more smiles than tears. But um, obviously, I'm just so thankful um, for the year that I had with her. I know that it would have never been possible. So I'm just thankful to our coaches and my family for helping it be possible. But obviously, it was just super sad knowing that like that could be potentially our last time together. But um, I think something that helped us was uh, that motivates us is for the future, it's like playing together again. So, yeah. Now, what are your team's goals and expectations uh, for next year? I'm assuming it's to win a national championship, but any other goals that might be in your team's radar that fans aren't aware of? Yeah. So obviously after this year, we're really motivated to bring home a national championship next year. Um, I think obviously winning the WCHA is really crucial because it sets you up for the NCAA selection show really nicely and really well. Like if you have a good seed, um, it'll help you in the long run. So I think that's crucial. And then just overall, just having a successful season. So, yeah. Now I do have to ask this question. Uh, do you know your non-conference games for next season and are you allowed to share them at all? I actually do not know uh, yet. Well, I'm excited to see what where you guys uh, end up because I, I want to see Minnesota come to the East Coast. I feel like you guys never come out here at all. I know. That would be so fun. Oh, I'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, hopefully it does happen, <laughs> at least during your playing career, so I get the chance to, to see you play. But 
Uh, we're now in a segment I like to call the non-hockey segment, where I ask you some non-hockey questions just to get to know you a little bit more off the ice. First one is, what music do you like to listen to? Um, I would say, like, pop music. Like, I like the TikTok songs. <laughs> what are some of the most popular uh, TikTok songs? I don't, I don't know any of them. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I'll go to, like, today's hits or something. Today's yeah. pop hits or whatever on like apple music and like it's pretty good yeah (laughs) yeah i would say for me i'm pretty much into every genre of music except for like heavy metal or like any like sort of like (laughs) interesting music musical genre that i've never heard of before but i have like a playlist for each one so i sort of just go to that one whatever mood i'm in yeah right now what is your most embarrassing hockey moment um honestly I think it happened this year (laughs) to be honest I remember I think it was before the break so it was before Christmas but I remember we were on the power play and someone on the top was so I was on the left side on my one-timer side and someone at the top was feeding me a one-timer and I like went to wind up for it just totally whipped like fell like kept sliding down into the corner and I was like all right like this is just so embarrassing (laughs) that's tough but at least you can laugh about it now so that's all that counts right right (laughs) now let's ask you some questions about your teammates who's the funniest uh, teammate you have uh, on Minnesota um I'm gonna have to go with my stallmate Chrislyn Hangler she is hilarious and never fails to make me smile uh which teammate has the best off ice style besides yourself obviously Mm, I'm going to have to go with my sister, Grace Zumwinkle or Emily Odin. Now, one more teammate question is, uh, who, which teammate would you love to see a reality TV show about? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, I think Madison Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> now, a few more non-hockey questions is, what's the most interesting thing uh, you've read or seen this week? um red or seen hmm. i can give you my answer if you want to think about yours okay yeah yep for me it's probably the whole arizona coyotes uh, stadium situation i saw that the tempe voted no for the new arena proposal so that means the coyotes are oh. going to have to figure out what's next since they can't play at mullet arena uh, just because it's too small so it's either going to figure out how to play in arizona or relocate and I was just pretty disappointed because I want hockey to work in Arizona. I think it's good for the sport when different regions have NHL franchises that are successful. We've seen it with Seattle and Vegas, just how good, how good it is for the sport. So I'm hoping Arizona can figure out a way to make it work in Arizona because I think hockey in the desert is a pretty cool thing. And I just want the sport to get better and grow in different areas of the country. So hopefully they have to, hopefully they can figure it out, but uh, I'll be interested to see if they can, if they have to go somewhere else and where that'll be. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great one. I feel like for mine, it's probably, I think I read that uh, COVID-19 was officially not a pandemic anymore. Wow. (laughs) That's exciting. Yeah. It's been three years. uh, I feel like it's, I feel like the last couple of months it sort of felt normal again, but I don't want to say it because I feel like when I do, then some sort of variant shows up and uh, makes my life uh, very difficult to manage. (laughs) Yeah. Well, getting back to some hockey questions now, uh, first one is uh, for all the younger players that listen to this pod, what advice would you give them on what it takes uh, to make it to college hockey where you are today? Yeah, I think honestly, like you just have to love what you do. Like your drive has to come from within. And I think ultimately, like you want to have fun with it and you want to enjoy everything that you're doing. Like you don't want it to feel forced or feel like a job because then you start like dreading it. So I think every day just showing up to the rank with a smile on your face, being able to do it with your friends, uh, having fun. And then I would just say, do what you can to get better in the off season and throughout the season, just put your best foot forward and work hard. What should be done to help grow women's hockey from your perspective? I think uh, one thing is just broadcasting it better. I think uh, being able to like have it on TV for people to watch is super cool. And then I think ultimately it goes back to broadcasting, like I said, but just getting more fans involved and uh, just at the games. And I think that would be super cool. Well, I saw that your team's going to play at the Exxon Energy Center next year against St. Thomas. That's a good way to help grow the sport. Are you excited about that game? 
Yeah, I'm really excited, especially since uh, both us and St. Thomas are from the Twin Cities. So it'll be a great, like, neutral place for us to play. And hopefully we'll get a good crowd out there. I have to ask about the Instagram post that Minnesota posted. It was pretty cool seeing you lay the body out. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, uh, that I just want to ask you about that. I thought that was pretty cool. I know. It looked like I was like checking her or something. I don't know. I think it looks pretty badass. I just want to, I will just want to tell you that. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, before we end this interview, do you have any shout outs you want to give uh, to any of your family members, friends, teammates, and uh, who should we have on the podcast next? Yeah, I'm going to have to shout out my whole Gopher Women's Hockey team, um, my family, and my sisters, Grace and Anna. And I would say for the podcast next, uh, my roomie, Peyton Ham, or my sister, Grace Salmenko. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Emily, for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate your time. It means so much to myself. And I can't wait to see your team back on the ice soon. And I wish you nothing but the best uh, uh, in the near future, both on and off the ice. Yeah, thank you so much for having me.